Let's talk about the difference between centralized and distributed system in this video. Let's first start with centralized system. A centralized system is usually a system with a single node and that single node will be the single point of control for that system. For example, if you are taking a website which is deployed in one web server and if that deployed website is all we need for the end-to-end -end functionality of that website, then we can call that system as a centralized system. And similarly, it's not just one node. We can have multiple nodes as well. So in this case, we have a website and this website depends on this database. We can call this system a centralized system as long as one of these nodes is the central point of control. In this case, the website is the central point of control and it reads and writes to the data in the database. The database is not a system on its own and it works with the website to make the end-to-end -end system possible. And usually the communication between these two will be synchronous. For example, this will be like a client server system. The website will make a call to the database and the database will act accordingly based on that call. So this type of system is also called centralized system. On the other hand, when we have distributed system, then we'll have multiple nodes and those nodes will be independent of each other and they'll have some mechanism to share data between those systems. So in this example, we have three different systems and they have some mechanism to share data and state between them, but they work independently. So think of this as a microservices architecture where you have one system for order management and another system for communication and we have another system for inventory and one more system for finance management. These are all independent systems, but they all have some kind of communication mechanism to coordinate among themselves. And the data synchronization usually will be asynchronous or they'll use eventual consistency pattern. Now, coming back to the centralized system, these are some of the examples for centralized systems. If you have any sort of client server architecture, then we are talking about centralized system. So for example, you might have a website which will be your client and you will also have web server backend. So that will be your server. So this will be client server architecture and that will be part of centralized system. And similarly, if you have single database, then we could call that as a centralized system. So on the distributed side, some of the examples include microservices architecture, cloud computing and content distribution network and also distributed database you'll have multiple nodes of the same database, they'll have some mechanism to synchronize data among themselves. In terms of the advantages of centralized system, usually centralized systems are simple to design and develop and they are always consistent because you know it is just one node, there is no inconsistency problem and also they are usually low latency system because there is no communication overhead between the nodes. And coming to the distributed system, the advantage is scalability. Because we have multiple nodes and each of those nodes work independently, we'll be able to scale them horizontally, which means we'll be able to add multiple nodes for one particular system or one particular functional component. So they'll be able to process more requests. And they are also fault tolerant because we could have multiple nodes, even if one of them goes down, the system will still continue to work, maybe with some performance impact, but the system will still continue to work. And again, because we have multiple nodes, they can work in parallel to achieve high concurrency. And they can also be geographically distributed. For example, if you have some users in Europe and some users in US, then you could have two nodes, one in the US and one in the Europe. So the traffic from each of those user base can be handled by their closest server. Now for the disadvantages of centralized system, because it is a centralized system, we have single node with the full control. We have high chance of single point of failure. And also because it is a single system, when it comes to scaling, we might have some trouble because we cannot do horizontal scaling that easily. We might go for the vertical scaling, which is not going to be highly scalable because you are restricted to the capacity of single machine for vertical scaling. 
and also performance because it is a single node deployed at a particular place in the world. If you have users far away from that server, then they might see some performance issues. And on the distributed system side, when we talk about disadvantages, distributed systems are usually high in complexity. So they are very complex to design and develop and they also experience high latency because we have multiple nodes and each of those nodes need to communicate with each other somehow. It is going to introduce some network related latency and consistency is going to be low because we have multiple nodes and the data and states need to be synchronized between those nodes somehow and that synchronization is usually asynchronous or eventual we might experience low consistency. So some nodes will have most recent data and some nodes might not get that data very soon. Those nodes need to wait longer to get the latest updates. And also because of the way distributed system works, it is very difficult to debug because we need to have multiple components running and they all need to work together. If you want to recreate a particular issue, it's going to be more complex compared to centralized system. So at a very very high level this is the difference between centralized and distributed system. Hope this is useful. Thank you.